Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go to the military map straight away. Today we have the information that Belarus put the surveillance locators and raiders near to Ukrainian border. As you can see we have a very long common border with Belarus and they put uh, new forces there but they are taking away old forces so they renew them constantly but it's the first time that we see the surveillance raiders near to our border but mostly those raiders are used for defense operations not for attacks the situation here is more or less calm however russia also thrown their forces to mother airport and near to pinsk so they have some sort of the mixed forces belarusia russia forces also sumi almost over here got some of the shelling from the russian territory to some of the villages but not significant this uh, day uh, so sumi is here sorry i was speaking about chernigiv yes yeah, sumi is here and kharkiv the same kharkiv every day the city itself is under the constant attacks uh, by Russian forces. Izum direction, well we got some of the land back over here but still we are in lack of reserves or reinforcements to go on to massive counterattack to Izum and I do not expect that we will go for this direction because Russia has lots of forces in this area. Speaking about this situation near to Lysychansk and near to Bilohorivka, well here more or less the situation is stable for many days uh, and here also near to Bakhmut Russia moved however just a little bit compared to yesterday yeah they moved and they took actually Pakroska village very near to Bakhmut my friends yeah I didn't see it before so today we got them eight kilometers uh, far from the center very close to Bakhmut actually it's a very threatening uh, situation for Ukraine but we have the defense line of Ukrainian forces goes along this uh, road from Bakhmut to Lysychansk and I guess they want to take Bakhmut after that uh, Konstantinovka and after that they want to go to Kramatorsk because from Slavansk it's almost impossible to reach Kramatorsk without severe losses uh, for Russian side and also today they took control over this part near to Vesela village this uh, part of the front line was very calm for a long time and now we have confirmed information that they took this M30 road on the way to uh Konstantinovka as well so probably maybe they're gonna reach uh this part and this part from Bakhmut that's the, their goal actually to reach Konstantinovka and from this part go to Kramatorsk but how many forces they gonna waste for that operation my friends countless I think uh, the south is more or less okay near to Zaporizhia we fire towards Energodar and Energodar is the city where the nuclear power plant is but we do not fire to nuclear power plant itself and their radar is quite big and russia put their command forces there as well let's go to the yes so those are the shells near to this road and this is the nuclear power plant i would say not far away kind of risky just four kilometers away oh my friends what is happening on this war is total madness as you can see lots of fires uh well on the south here in russian controlled territory mostly those are wildfires natural ones because they don't have enough forces to i mean uh, fire fighting forces eliminate those wildfires in the fields uh, and here we have also in ukraine lots of the wildfires just as, not as much and as on russian controlled uh, territory here are some of the fresh spots uh, here is clearly not the wildfires but the shells coming from russian side very near to kramatorsk my friends the situation here is more or less standstill on the south and uh, near to the front line near to Kherson between Mykolaiv and Kherson the situation I would say becomes more stable and Russia continued to throw their forces to this uh, Kherson area they increased total quantity of soldiers armored vehicles and tanks for more than two times so together they have around 
25,000 soldiers on this area and they throw them mostly over here on the nose part very close to Kriwiri where Ukrainian army got some sort of success we were able to capture Olhine and uh, Potomkina, Potomkina village which is here and those Russian forces being almost circle almost I mean that we still may use artillery to cut down their way out and together they have around 1500 soldiers near to Visikapilia, the Russian side. So as for the bridges, it is confirmed that uh, this railroad bridge was uh, destroyed completely. At least it needs significant repairs. Russia cannot provide it with that. Russia tries to renew this bridge because they were able to build the Panton Bridge, but the Panton Bridge cannot be used in this particular area for the tanks. So the main artillery for Russian tanks and armored vehicles, heavy ones, uh, supply is coming through this dam that is obviously cannot be destroyed according to United Nations conventions. Uh, after the Second World War, no dam should be destroyed by any side of any conflict, my friends. So that's why Ukrainian forces will not destroy the dam. Yeah, I'll just remove uh, this fire detection because everything is covered with dots. Uh, my friends, the situation is very interesting. So we cannot now perform the massive counterattack. We're going to lose lots of forces because Russia sent reinforcements. So for now, uh, we will just wait, I think, and we're going to cut uh, those supply lines for Russians, for sure. I don't know how we're going to cut the dam, but somehow we're going to do it. And also we're going to trap them uh, here on this piece of land, because clearly what Russia is doing, they're throwing their forces uh, to this area that can be easily cut away from the main supplies and the main supplies for Russia are coming from Crimean Peninsula and we cannot so far cut this main supply line, the carriage bridge, because we don't have uh, those kind of weapons that can fire and destroy this massive construction. You see, we fired uh, Hymasis uh, three times to Antonovsky bridge and it was just severely damaged. Imagine uh, the carriage bridge, it is more massive compared to Antonovsky bridge, of course, and you need some kind of huge bomb to destroy it. Well, about the Sevastopol, my hometown, I was born there, I spent my childhood there, uh, every summer I went to, to that place, actually here near to Kacha, uh, sorry, here, Kacha. So I used to live there, but I was born here in Sevastopol. And just yesterday it was the attack on the Russian Black Sea Marine Fleet Command Office. Well, the drone that performed that attack was kind of small. It carried a small shell and for sure it was fired. It was launched. This drone was launched from Crimean territory, not from Ukraine, because Sevastopol is very far away from Ukrainian territory. And let's just measure from Sevastopol somewhere here to Ukrainian territory. It's 288 kilometers around and you cannot even use a Bayraktar drone to reach Sevastopol because the Bayraktar drone range is around 150 kilometers away from the command centers so if you have lots of those command centers the range is uh, in theory unlimited but 150 kilometers uh, it's the maximum range from the that controlled centers so you cannot reach the Sebastopol with Bayraktar drone for sure my friends because of that small drone attack Russia cancelled the celebration of the Black Sea Marine Fleet anniversary uh, that is good it is usually celebrated on the last uh, Sunday of July so yesterday it was the last Sunday of July everything was cancelled parades fireworks they increased the level of the public awareness from yellow to amber or something like that so they do not celebrate they didn't uh, Russian Black Fleet itself is located between Novorossiysk and Crimea somewhere in this territory there are six ships ready to fire the cruise missiles so totally they carry around 44 cruise missiles that can attack Ukrainian territory. Uh, recently they were not used for that purpose and it's good. For now Russia mostly uses the rocket artillery systems to attack Mykolaiv and Kharkiv and the eastern part of Ukraine. They constantly 
bomb our cities, my friends. About Alenivka prison that was uh, under Russian attack recently and many of the Azov guys lost their uh, lives there. Where is the prison? I think it's uh, somewhere here. Well, we got some of the satellite images showing that it wasn't uh, the artillery attack. It was the explosion from inside and the pictures that we got also from inside showing that it was more fire than it was the explosion and we have also the the pictures that there were graves open on the territory of this facility and we have the clue that those soldiers who lost their lives there were murdered before the attack and uh, those bodies were just carried to uh, the building and Russia just put some sort of explosions into the building and exploded saying that it was Ukrainian job but clearly it was the violation of the rules and conventions of how you should behave with war prisoners so russia doesn't have any rules they are barbarians and they also rejected the proposal from the red cross to investigate uh, this case red cross has all of the required responsibilities to start this investigation and russia refused uh, to grant them access to this area it clearly shows that they are guilty as for me my friends i would like to know the surname of the ukrainian official who was responsible for negotiations with russia on azovstal mariupol three months ago then our guys from azov left mariupol for the russian controlled territory and basically yeah we have different meanings uh, they surrendered they evacuated but basically russia took them they um, went to russian controlled territory and after that they went to this camp and just been killed so who was responsible to guarantee the lives of our soldiers why did they go to russian territory because otherwise they may, might have just fight for their lives anyways they will just lose their lives so they should have found in this case if the uh, life of those soldiers uh, were not guaranteed um, i hope you understood my english is not very good and now let's go to some of the news and events great news from our ministry of defense we have four additional hamas systems delivered to ukraine today so i guess we have 16 hamases right now but totally we need around 100 of the rocket artillery systems as hamas together with m270 mlrs rocket artillery systems to change uh, the way the war now develops as you can see russia still takes ukrainian ground but we need to move them away and for that obviously we need rocket systems thank you so much united states for helping ukraine russia published that and say that they have destroyed hymers who put hymers on the second floor of the building <laughs> yeah they're hilarious and one more for today mlrs mars 2 from germany has arrived to ukraine i don't know how many of those uh, were delivered probably just one who knows but still it's a very effective weapon we have a british intelligence report saying that russia is performing some kind of attempts tactical attempts to assault on bahmut axis and as we saw on the military map they're really successful taking village by village well for every village they waste like three up to three days up to one week and also british intelligence says that russia throws their forces from uh, eastern part of ukraine nowadays to the southern part but because they're really afraid of ukrainian counterattack on Kherson. if they lose Kherson, my friends it will be devastation for the russian propaganda so russia is probably adjusting the operational design of donbass uh, operation and it has likely identified its zaporizhia front as vulnerable area and needed uh, reinforcements as well so they send their troops uh, to the south of ukraine we'll see the outcome of that future battle my friends we're gonna see it uh, very very soon in this month in august my friends this video is not about the war but this guy is russian and he has grenade in his hands if we see someone is doing something dangerous we usually call oh it's the monkey with grenade so this is the example of that monkey just want to show you Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah it may happen just in russia so he said like the guy filming say uh, no no don't do it and uh, the guy who was with grenade said i know how to behave with this uh, kind of grenade <laughs> and that is what happened united kingdom will give ukraine uh, some of the ships well we have the picture of the air carrier my friends they will give us small kind of small ships that mainly used to demine uh the area of the sea basically near to ukrainian ports so we're gonna get them hopefully this year and the first ship with food supplies left a ukrainian port of odessa today good achievement and we just hope uh, to sell more of the food to the third countries and they need food we need uh, money for our economy the video filmed by russian propaganda so now they have ferry that goes across the Dnieper river in Kherson. Uh, just along the antonovsky bridge you may see it on a picture over here so they have uh, this kind of moving pantheon engineering army forces of russia and basically this bridge is used to provide supplies and also it is used by the local citizens of Kherson. and you need actually to pay for it 250 grivnes per each time you want to take the ferry and there is the boat and actually i do not see the big pantone bridge here on the video that they uh say that they built probably they just built this ferry there and that's it the current is quite strong uh, over there and they obviously cannot carry tanks on that on that ferry because it cannot uh, just carry that heavy loads on uh, that one so russian propaganda films just uh, random people there and it shows that definitely we cause severe damage to Antonovsky Bridge. I hope people will just go away from the Kherson. Our military command and our politicians called for the evacuation of Kherson because the Ukrainian army may go for the counterattack in that area. And let's speak about serbia kosovo conflict that erupted yesterday very rapidly, I would say. It was even some shooting near to the border of Serbia. Serbia uh, does not recognize Kosovo as a sovereign country. However, Kosovo uh, recognized um, as a sovereign country by many. I think also by United States of America. There is the NATO uh, forces in that country as well. Around 3,000 soldiers together with armored vehicles and other stuff. You may uh, recall that from the 90s. The name K so they still over there my friends Kosovo largest uh, population are Albans uh, from Albania Albania is here more on the south uh, who are Muslims but on the north part of Kosovo they are mostly Serbs and uh, Kosovo introduced new regulations because uh, it is like independent country and they want their own regulations so they implement new number plates for the cars uh, that registered in Kosovo. And Serbs on the north part of Kosovo said, we don't care about your regulations. Uh, we will still drive cars using uh, Serb number plates. And uh, Serbia itself said, oh, you put, uh, uh, you go against Serbs in Kosovo. Uh, Kosovo has a parliament, has different government. Serbia obviously doesn't recognize that and Serbia said you're going uh, you're like humiliating Serbs in Kosovo so we're gonna go against you but for now um, this everything halted for a moment for one month because Kosovo decided to postpone the decision to uh, for the new number plates and other documents for the cars and not only uh, till the 1st of September so we're gonna return to that stuff and the 1st of September and this conflict is very profitable for Putin and Russia because they need to have something that will deflect European Union attention from Ukraine let's help to Ukraine forget about this war we're gonna handle it ourselves don't go to Ukraine take care about Serbia and Kosovo obviously this conflict may just explode rapidly and Albania obviously will not leave their own people they're gonna also join uh, this conflict if Serbia will go on attack to Kosovo again and um, not speaking about the NATO forces 
K4 that are based in Kosovo, my friend. And we have the statement from President Biden that he's going to speak. He's ready to speak with the president of Russia about the nuclear weapons control. Uh, so there is some kind of negotiation. Um, it's called SNV-3 in Russian and Ukrainian. It's going to expire in 2026, so we need uh, new regulations to reduce uh, nuclear weaponry. Uh, from the Soviet times, those weapons were gradually reduced. The number of their warheads and number of rockets were reduced. But now in a modern world, you see the world just goes crazy and China increased uh, their rocket number for two consecutive years by more than 50 percent my friends they just don't care so the agreement uh, is between russia and america but obviously we have china that behaves uh, very differently and again we have the confirmation from congress that they are ready to supply 300 kilometer range uh, ballistic tactical ballistic rockets for the HIMARS and mlrs systems to ukraine so we have support from the balls parties for that issue but obviously it's up to pentagon and white house to decide whether to support to ukraine those kind of weapons or not but i think it should be like a common a decision from united states of america and western allies i think we need that weapon my friends honestly all right tomorrow is the day go no go my friends uh, nancy pelosi it is said that nancy pelosi is going to visit taiwan tomorrow uh kiev time is gonna be uh 5 30 p.m so half past five as for utc i guess we have uh, three hours difference uh with the utc time and i'm gonna stream i'm gonna stream the flight if i see it flying obviously and uh, the china is ready for it china today published the video how they about their army because it's the army day today for uh, China and they're willing to protect their own country but I would say that for the United States of America it's better not to cancel the visit on Taiwan because if they cancel this visit uh, they will show the weakness and uh, those dictatorships autocratic countries like China Russia if they see that you are weak they're gonna push you they're gonna push you and for the United States I think it's better to be strong I obviously saw some of the comments uh, that it's Nancy's idea to visit the countries but my friends those kind of visits are agreed uh, with everything with pentagon with the uh, biden administration with congress with everything so it's the willing of the united states themselves my friends because they send even air carrier to just in case to protect maybe the airplane the airplane she is traveling on is boeing c40c which is the version of boeing 737 700 and i'm type rated on that airplane very interesting to see the boeing 737 just flies on the, those long ranges across pacific ocean to Hawaiians to guam island now she's in singapore and from singapore to taiwan well it's not a long distance i would say for this kind of airplane and she's gonna visit the Grand Hyatt uh, it will be the evening time for Taiwan almost the night time and in the morning next day uh, she's gonna visit uh, the leader of Taiwan uh, country Tsai event um, so we're gonna see we're gonna see very uh, risky as for the world itself I would say but I think United States uh, need to push push hard China because China behaves not good uh, this time this is the Ukrainian Mi-24 how it performs the artillery type of fire uh, it's not very precise but still very safe for the crew of that helicopter I like the shapes of this. We call it alligator. <laughs> if you see those two stripes in the tail and that circle, which is blue inside and yellow outside, it is for sure the Ukrainian aircraft. Yeah, and just to love, uh, this is the official publication in Russian media happy military marine fleet <laughs> so they celebrate should have celebrated yesterday but didn't. And this is Moskva 
flagship that is uh, celebrating the marine russian marine fleet uh, on the bottom of the sea floor anyways my friends i hope you just uh, like this video if you like it press the like button and also you may support me i put all the links below where you can support me on patreon paypal or donatella whichever you like my friends i wish you all the peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time